So in this video, I want to show you several different ways of viewing the Lorenz attractor. And I'll show you a couple of different programs um, that you can use to do so. But first, let's just take a look at this figure again. This is the same thing I printed out and showed in the previous video. This is the view of the Lorenz attractor in three-dimensional space, x, y, and z. And this is just the output from my Python program. And one can drag and move this shape around, and that might help see the three-dimensionalness of it. So um, x, y, and z. First thing that I will attempt to do, I'm not always good at moving my mouse the right way to do this. All right, so here is more or less a top view of this. So we're look, if we look straight down, so here's the, the z-axis. We're looking straight down. We can see it move all right, side to side in x, side to side in y. Let's see, this is sort of the original view. Let's do another side view like that. So now I'm looking and I can see z up and down and y left to right, but x back to front I can't really see. So I'm looking now from, a, from another side of it. And maybe, maybe, maybe in this view, you can see how they're weaving together. They're not actually, the lines aren't actually crossing. It's a three-dimensional object. Um, and the lines don't actually cross. Okay, so what I want to do now is uh, use a few other programs that um, will show us different views of the, of the Lorenz attractor. Links to all of these programs are in the section called Links to Programs. They're all external to Complexity Explorer, um, but the links should work. Everything seems stable. So let's check those programs out. And the goal of this is to both see how this is an attractor, that it pulls in nearby orbits, and that it's strange, meaning that the motion on the attractor itself is aperiodic. Maybe that's easy to see because it's not repeating. Um, but it's chaotic, has sensitive dependence on initial conditions. So here's the first program that I want to show you. It's another program from the Experimentarium Digital site, the same site we went to um, for the Henan Attractor program. So this is just a simple program that renders the Lorenz Attractor in 3D. Uh, I mean, it's not really 3D. It's still flat on a computer screen. but um, there's the shape, and if you click on it and slide your mouse around, you can move it through three-dimensional space and um, see the three-dimensional structure of it. So um, this doesn't have the axes, so it's a little harder to see where it's being oriented, but at least it's a, a way that online you can get a feel for how this is a three-dimensional object. So here's the next program. It's also um, at the Experimentarium Digital. And this um, will plot uh, the Lorenz attractor for us in a couple of different ways. So again, the site is in French. Um, you could Google Translate if you translate it if you want, but it gives just a, a very brief discussion of the Lorenz equations. And let's scroll down here. And there are two programs on this page. Let's look at the first one first. So um, we can change the parameter values, rho, sigma, and beta. But I think for the most part, I'll just keep them here. This is the sort of famous chaotic value, the one we're trying to understand. And well, to start, you hit start. And there it makes the friends attractor. And you can stop it can reset it and <coughs> plot it again. So it's a pretty nice image and you can see it unfolding in real time and I believe this is a top view of the attractor. So we're looking straight down the z-axis and this is x and that's y up and down. Um, you can change the row value Let's change it to, I'll do it here, change it to 9. That's something we did before and not very exciting, we see it spiraling in right here. It might be a little hard to see on the screen. So you can um, 
experiment, slide this value up and down and you'll see different behaviors. Um, but in any event, this will let us plot the Lorenz attractor. All right, so let's scroll down and we'll get to an even more interesting and I think more fun program. Um, so let's see, I'm going to move when you click on the screen here, you can change the position of this gray circle, and that'll be our initial condition. Maybe I'll move that out here. And again, you can change the parameter values. I'm going to keep it, um, I think, for the most part, at, at these values. And let's start. And we can see that it traces out the, um, the, the curve in phase space. Again, we're just we're looking down, this is a top view. It's a three-dimensional object, but we're just getting the top view of it. And down here, the program plots the x versus t curve um, on, a, on a pretty short time axis, so they, things look sort of drawn out. And notice that when the x value is less than zero, we're over here. When x value is positive, we're over here. All right, so it's tracing out that attractor, that shape. I'm going to stop, and I can, I'm going to choose a different initial condition. I just clicked on the on the grid, and I'll start. And I can see that this trajectory that started off the attractor gets pulled into the attractor. So what I'm trying to show, convince you of here is that this attractor really is attracting. I'll um, stop for a moment choose an initial condition out here, start it again, and sure enough I get pulled into that attractor very quickly. Now I can choose more and more initial conditions. It starts to look more and more like a mess. But I'm always getting pulled to the attractor, and then we can watch the point in space, that um, gray sphere move around on the left and then the right and back to the left and so on wobbling back and forth. So uh, this is letting us see that this attractor really is an attractor. Lots and lots of initial conditions, almost all initial conditions get pulled into that attractor very very quickly. Okay, so now um, I'll stop the program for a moment and I'm going to reset it and I'm going to click here. Um, so this is for sensitive dependence on initial conditions, which apparently in French is sensibilité aux conditions initiales. Um, so I'll reset. And now notice that there are basically a pair of uh, starting values, red and gray. So what this will let us do, um, this, will, this, this will plot two different trajectories, one in red and one in gray, and they start off very close together. The program doesn't say how close, but they're very, very close together. And we'll see that together, the initial conditions get pulled quickly to the attractor. Once they're on the attractor, it'll take a little while, but um, soon they'll get pushed apart and the motion will appear independent. So let's watch that unfold. All right, so it's getting pulled to the attractor, and the gray and the red are on top of each other. Pretty soon, yet right now, they're starting to spread apart, and now they're in different lobes altogether. So this was illustrating the butterfly effect. Two initial conditions, they start off very close, they track together very, very, very closely, but then at some point they separate, and they end up um, tracing out the same not identical, but um, they're both on the attractor. They're constrained to be on this attractor, this funny shape that's uh, a little bit more than two-dimensional. Uh, but the motion is aperiodic and has sensitive dependence on initial conditions. Let's see. I'll choose another pair of initial conditions. And again, the two close by initial conditions stay close together for a little while, but then get pushed apart. So they get pulled together towards the attractor because the attractor is an attractor, but the motion on the attractor is itself chaotic. It's aperiodic and has sensitive dependence on initial conditions. Let's do one more. I'll choose an initial condition here. And now we're stuck on the right for a little while. 
tracking together very closely. Now they're spreading apart more and more, and now they're on different lobes, and it's as if they're completely uncorrelated. So a tiny difference in the initial condition makes a large difference later on. So um, that's this program on the Experimentarium Digital. And in the next video, I'll show you one more program that gives you another way to experiment and visualize uh, the strangeness of this strange attractor.